Listening to the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Locking down the middle of the day. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. Welcome in! Hunt Palmer coming to you from the Mercedes-Benz of Baton Rouge Studio downtown in the capital city on this Friday, presented by Quartz, Cajun Fried Fish, and Shrimp. Appreciate you hanging out with us as we're working towards the long holiday weekend. Hopefully you've already knocked off of work for the day. If not, hang with us here. If so, and you're traveling to see friends and family, be very, very careful and keep us locked in. We're going to have some fun here for the next two hours. Got Jacob Beck and Casey Gaines with me here. Preston Guy will be along in 15 minutes to talk about LSU. We'll talk about the offensive coordinator situation with the reports that Mike Denbrock has accepted a job up at Notre Dame. So we'll get to that in about 15 minutes. We'll get you ready for the NFL weekend, which is long and exciting. Going to be a great weekend in the NFL. Uh, We'll talk to Brandon Taylor at 2 o'clock, my guy from the LSU Sports Radio Network, former all-conference safety and SEC champion. I just want to talk to BT, one, a little bit about LSU this year, but two, just kind of the state of, of college football. I love Brandon's thoughts on on that. He's a, he's a blue-collar dude who believes in hard work and loyalty and all that, and it feels like the, the sport is uh, as volatile as it's ever been, and I kind of want to talk about that a little bit with BT. Basketball got a win last night for LSU. Nice performance there. Florida State is suing the ACC, so we've got plenty to get to over the next two hours. Lock us in. If you would, I got to start with the Saints. Um, The Saints lose last night in L.A. 30 to 22. And on its face, you would look at that final score and you would say, well, they went on the road. They played a good team and they came up a score short. And you'd you'd be right in saying that. Um, You could suggest that the Saints had a lot of toughness and fight and they came back. And you'd be right for saying that, too. But none of that's important. What's important is that this team is not good enough to compete at the highest level in the NFL. They have proven that routinely over the last two years. And changes have to be made. Have to. The decision-making is poor. The preparation is poor. The execution is poor. From the top down in the organization, everything is poor. And at times it gets camouflaged against atrocious teams, and we'll talk about that. But when you play the teams that function at a high level in the NFL, you get beat. I thought the decision-making from Dennis Allen last night was atrocious. On the opening drive, Derek Carr takes a sack, which you can't take on that third and seven, and knocks you back to the 37-yard line. And I truly believe this. Truly believe this. I don't believe this is hyperbole at all. The Saints have the only head coach-kicker combination in the entire NFL that would have passed on a 55-yard field goal attempt inside in the first quarter. That is a green light special for 31 teams in the NFL, not the Saints, who punted it away from the 37 freaking yard line and let the Rams go 95 yards right down their throat for a touchdown. And then you fast forward two quarters, and at the end of the first half, they do go for a fourth and five with 56 seconds to go, which was probably a time to try to punt because you gave the Rams a short field because you didn't convert. And they go right down the field, 58 yards in five plays for a touchdown. Both decisions, I thought, awful. And that's been this Dennis Allen era. Bad decisions and a bunch of losses. Look at the teams that this New Orleans Saints team has played. It's a joke. I'll go to the AFC, the top of the AFC. The Ravens are 11 and 3. The Saints play them? No. Miami's 10 and 4. Saints play them? No. Kansas City's 9 and 5. Saints play them? No. Cleveland's 9 and 5. The Saints play them? No. You've got to go down to Jacksonville at 8 and 6 in the AFC to find a team the Saints have played. None of the top 4. Go to the top of the NFC. San Francisco's 11 and 3. Saints play them? No. Dallas is 10 and 4. Saints play them? No. Detroit's 10 and 4. You did play them. Philadelphia is 10 and 4, didn't play them. And the Rams are now 8 and 7, and you played them. Three. If you go to the top five teams in each conference, that's 10 teams, you've played three of them. Oh, and how'd those games go? 
Well, against the Rams, you got down 30 to 7. That's a team that's prepared and ready to go. Against Detroit, you got down 24 to 7 in your home building. And against Jacksonville, you got down 24 to 9. So the three times you actually did play teams that function at all, you were three scores down immediately. Look at the wins the Saints have this year. Tennessee, they're 5 and 9. Carolina, 2 and 12. New England, 3 and 11. You beat Indianapolis with their backup quarterback, 8 and 6. You beat the Bears, they're 5 and 9. And you beat the Giants, who are also 5 and 9. The combined record of the teams the Saints have beaten this year is 28 and 56. And what do these teams generally have in common? Tennessee, they're in the AFC South, in last. Carolina, NFC South, in last. New England, AFC East, in last. Chicago, NFC North, in last. 28 and 56 is their combined record. Dennis Allen has to go. He's terrible. There is no case to be made for keeping him around with the New Orleans Saints. We have a two-year sample size. His head coaching career is 22 and 45 over two stops. He got handed a schedule on a silver platter and threw up all over it. Every single time the Saints play a team with a pulse, they get dusted. They are feasting on the dregs of the league. The teams they are beating are more focused on Caleb Williams and Drake May and Jaden Daniels than playing the Saints. It's pathetic, and it's week after week after week. There is no possible way that Gail Benson and Dennis Lausha and Mickey Loomis can look at this body of work and have any other reaction than to say, you're toast. In fact, I welcome a guest onto the show, Red Bellew. He's the head coach of the Louisiana Cougars. Tough loss in the Bourbon Bowl. He's got a message for Dennis Allen. You're fired! Get rid of this guy. It's, it's, it's comical. They're going to lose in Tampa next week because the Buccaneers have won three in a row and are a reasonably functional team, which means they're going to beat you. And then the Superdome is going to be empty in two weeks when Atlanta comes in week 18, and that will be the swan song here. We've tried to paint this thing as, as mildly interesting. We've tried to continue to look at the NFC South standings. We've tried to stay engaged with this team and with this franchise, but the fact of the matter is there is way too much evidence at this point to think anything other than this franchise with this era of players is toast. And it doesn't get camouflaged because you beat Tommy Cutlets. It doesn't get camouflaged because you picked Bryce Young off. It doesn't get camouflaged because you won a low-scoring fight against Ryan Tannehill back in week one who got benched. It's a big-picture thing. And this week after week, after week. Dennis Allen will be picked up within the week as a defensive coordinator when he is ultimately let go of. But he cannot be a head coach. It is a failed experiment. It was a reasonable thing to do to try to keep some sense of continuity and organizational structure. You had a great run, the greatest in the history of the franchise. You've got a lot of those pieces still there. Let's try to keep this thing on the tracks. It's crashed. Get rid of it. You got to deal with Derek Carr's situation and, and, and ride this thing out. But Pete Carmichael, no. Dennis Allen, no. And you look around at that roster, and there are guys that are either going to have to be massive dead money hits or you're just going to have to play out the string. But if, as I go through the Saints roster, I look at who on the Saints roster has better football in front of him than he does today. You could argue Alave, Brzee, that's probably it. Not Ramchick, not Kamara, not Michael Thomas, not Derek Carr, not Demario Davis, not Cam Jordan. Sheed Shahid. Rashid Shahid, fine. Carl Granderson, maybe. But it's everybody's on the back end of this thing for the most part, and it's a really sickening place to be in, but there is no way to camouflage it anymore. It is what it is. The salary cap situation stinks, the roster's old, the coach sucks, and it's a disaster. And last night had to be the final straw. 
It had to be. You could look at the final score and say, oh, 30 to 22. That's you're within a score on the road. That's just you know a tough loss. Dude, it was 30 to 7. They were non-competitive for the meat of this game. I'm not gonna let more Derek Carr garbage time touchdown throws camouflage that. It doesn't camouflage the fact that you were down by 15 points to Jacksonville in the first half. The fact that Detroit came in and just humiliated you for two quarters. Just because you can beat last place teams is not going to camouflage the state of this organization. And last night should have been the final nail that finished it. And I can't imagine a conversation going any other way between the, the, the brass of the Saints at the executive level. So you got a couple weeks left. I think they get smoked in, in Tampa next week. And then the, the dome's empty for a meaningless game against Atlanta. And that should be the swan song. Saints lose it 30-22. to 22. Talk a little bit more about it coming up later on in the show. We had some breaking news here in Baton Rouge earlier today. Mike Denbrock has um, reportedly decided to head back to Notre Dame to call their offense for Marcus Freeman. Puts LSU in the market for an offensive coordinator. We'll talk about it with Preston McGuy coming up next. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. Boudreaux's Electric. Prevent those power outages at your home with a Generac generator. Boudreaux can do it. Neil and Melissa have been running that comp- uh, company for 40 years. And there's a reason why they're growing. It's because they do such a wonderful job. You make the call to Boudreaux Electric, they come out, look at your home, square footage, what you want powered, and they can customize a generator exactly to your needs. And when they come and install it, they're going to use the highest quality in copper and wiring and piping. And they're going to install that generator in a way that's aesthetically pleasing. They're going to do most of the work underground so you don't have unsightly things outside your home that a lot of people take pride in the appearance of their home. And you're protected from power outages, whether it's a storm that comes through, it's a hurricane, or even an ice storm that happens every once in a while down here. You can be protected from power outages by uh, calling Boudreaux Electric. 225-300-9389 is the number. 225-300-9389. Give them a call at Boudreaux Electric. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $10,000 off MSRP on new 23 Jeep Grand Cherokee. $10,000 off new Jeep Grand Cherokee. And all new Bayou Automotive vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. His name was Kane. He had a horse along the countryside. I saw him ride. One day they found him. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. Oh, by the way, we do shutters too. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, live at lunch on Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. The world's leaders in obesity research, obesity medicine, and obesity science are right here. We're doing something that no one's ever done or trying to answer a question that no one's ever asked before. Pennington is a real jewel when it comes to research. We are finding the solutions to the world's worst chronic disease, which is obesity. Louisiana needs Pennington Biomedical. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans.
Would a couple that just came from a couple's massage have any use for the massage seats of the Infinity QX60? Yes, it appears they would. With driver and passenger massage seats, mute all your notifications and feel infinitely you. Jimmy out and Charles Hanegriff. It's Tuesday edition of Live at Lunch, live at Mike Anderson Seafood on Lee just off of Nicholson. That's right, Tuesday, live at lunch, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. right here, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Moving right along here on a Friday edition. Well, I guess I should clear my throat before I start talking on the air. <clears throat> <laughs> Moving right along here on a Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show, presented by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. We'll head out to the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Chat with our guy, Preston Guy from TigerBait.com. Preston, Merry Christmas. How are you? Hey, Hunt. How's it going? We've got a Christmas special for LSU fans today. You lost your offensive coordinator who coordinated the number one offense in the country, but the coordinator who... Uh, Coordinated the hundredth ranked defense is still sitting there, nice and pretty. He is, and he'll uh, he'll be coaching the bowl game, and then we'll see what happens uh, in the week to follow. How big a deal is the Mike Denbrock news? Yeah, it's a big deal. I mean, anytime you get a guy who is clearly capable of calling the offense, he called. That, that I'm not going to sit here and mitigate the loss. It's like when you lose the the recruit to another school that you wanted. Well, he wasn't that good to begin. I'm yep. never going to be that guy. You know, like yeah, he was a good coach. That being said, um, there's a couple guys on staff that, you know, are Cortez Hankton and Joe Sloan are going to be co-offensive coordinators for the bowl game. They're going to get a good shot. Uh, there's a lot of positive buzz around Joe Sloan and how much you want to keep him, you know, so I believe he will probably get the first look at offensive coordinator. And, you know, there, there's a lot of talented guys out there. I had uh, uh, Dave Bartu of uh, Matrix Analytical uh, reach out to me and say, hey, look, there are – four offensive coordinators out there who get a rank of four stars or higher, which is what uh, he had Denbrock as. Uh, that's what he had Denbrock before the season, <laughs> not after this season. So um, there, there's guys out there, you know, and LSU will be able to hire someone, someone good. That is the silver lining. But am I going to sit here and tell you, you would have rather him leave and take this job than keep him? Of course not. That's silly. Do you think that the bowl game is sort of an audition for Sloan? Absolutely. Absolutely. And Cortez Hankton, by the way, uh, both are highly regarded coaches. And I, I, in fact, would be shocked if we don't see something to the effect of, you know, we're going to let Joe call the plays for, you know, uh, a quarter and a half. And we're going to let, um, you know, so-and-so call it for the next quarter and a half or whatever, something like that, you know, to where you give them both an audition. I, I think it's 100 uh, percent looking like that. I, where's your confidence level with Brian Kelly in terms of making this hire? That's kind of uh, his M.O. At, at, at Notre Dame was was bringing in a lot of quality assistants that, that elevated their careers. Yeah, I, I, you know, he's been a solid uh, coach who's hired solid coaches, and he's made changes when needed. Uh, and, you know, ultimately you bring in a guy like Brian Kelly who has the knowledge of, of play calling because he knows what he's looking for. He understands the system. This wasn't like Ogeron who – you know, great motivator, elite recruiter, good person to be around, did a lot of good things. He didn't necessarily know how to call plays. He never called plays once in his entire career. Well, well, Brian Kelly's called plenty of plays in his career, so he knows what he's looking for. Yeah, I, I have a I have a high level of confidence that he'll he'll manage this the right way. What did you think about the addition of AJ Swan to the program? I think it's really good. You remember I've come on here and talked to you a couple times about them wanting to add depth to that quarterback room, but not a guy who's going to run Nussmeyer off because let's not act like you don't have a guy who's capable with Nussmeyer already there. It's a guy who's got SEC experience, um, can step in if you need him in a, in a pinch and, and provide some, some good serviceable play without looking like a deer in headlights. Uh, and he's a guy who's going to push Nussmeyer from behind. Are you surprised that Mikai Wingo, Brian Thomas, and Malik Neighbors are going through full practices and plan to play in this bowl game? Um, not really. Mikai Wingo probably the most, but I mean, he was. I mean, from the second he got injured, he was hot to trot to get back to playing. You know, I mean, he tweeted out, 
I'll be there for the playoff, you know, even though LSU already had two losses yeah. at that point. Um, so, you know, his whole attitude around it doesn't surprise me. Brian Thomas, I think in particular, has a lot to benefit from this bowl game. Um, I mean, right now he's looking like bottom of the first round, second round pick. It's a stacked receiver class, right? And he's the number two guy on this team. Uh, if he goes out there and performs with a backup quarterback and the offensive coordinator gone, there's a lot of money to be made if you're Brian Thomas. So, no, it doesn't surprise me. Kind of a boring signing day around here, but I say that in a, in a positive way. What was your biggest takeaway from LSU's class that, uh, that inked on Wednesday? Yeah, 27 out of 27. They're not done yet. Um, you know, all eyes on Cohen and Coles today at 3 o'clock. He'll be announcing where he's signing, so that could put LSU up. But, you know, it was a bit of a lackluster class. It finished 10th in the country. And obviously, LSU fans are used to seeing higher than that. Um, but the fact that they're not done, they got 27 players, uh, and they locked down the state. And, you know, they're going to get uh, eight or nine of the top 10 players in state. You signed 17 players in the state of Louisiana. I think 24 of your 27 are coming from either Louisiana or neighboring states, Mississippi and Texas. Um, yeah, I mean, it's an incredible job locking down what you have. And part of the LSU coaching job is, you know, sometimes there's down years in the state of Louisiana, and that means your recruiting class is going to be down. That's what makes it a special job. It's what also makes it a little bit of, you know, of a different situation when it's down on paper. Now, there's still plenty of quality players. The thing I like most about this class, I harp on class composition more than a lot of recruiting guys do i think every single year your recruiting class you should be able to field a football team with right uh, you should get a starting 22 every single year right that way as attrition happens which we all know attrition is happening at a higher rate than we've ever seen before as that continues you'll have guys unless you blow through you know four straight years of players are gone at a single position uh, you're going to have someone there with some quality depth and experience that you've been developing in your program. So I really like that. You sign, you know, five offensive linemen, possibly a six today. You get six defensive linemen, three linebackers, six DBs, three wide receivers, a running back, and a quarterback. I mean, you got what you need. Oh, and by the way, the number one tight end in the country. Didn't even mention him. So that's a football team you can go out and win some football games with. I, I, I like that about what uh, what they're doing with the class. In fact, class composition was probably the Ogeron era's biggest issue. Is they would sign a top five class, and then they brought in two offensive linemen. Like, that's a problem. Yeah, you're winning on paper, but what if, what if you know, one or two of those guys don't pan out for whatever reason? then guess what? You went over <laughs> on the offensive line for an entire year. Uh, you sign five or six, that's a lot of guys you're going to have to miss out on to not get a quality player. I think we're probably done talking about the program that Brian Kelly inherited moving forward. I don't think we have to talk about the Texas Tech game, uh, uh, the Texas, the Kansas State game anymore. Um, where do you feel this program is right now moving into, into the offseason? Okay, so future is in next season or future is in moving forward? Because I think moving forward under Brian Kelly, I think they're going to be fine. I mean, your, your 2025 recruiting class is going to be a monster class. Yeah. Um, and as long as you keep things together, I think next year they've got their work cut out for them. Right now, Brian Kelly has a ton of work to do. Um, you know, he's got to come up with solutions at both coordinator spots because – you got one coordinator coordinated the 100th ranked defense, and you're going to have to find a way where you're not going to be the 100th ranked defense next year. And you got one coordinator who's out the door. So, a lot of work cut out. This reminds me a lot of that 2019 season where you lost everybody. You lost your coordinators. You lost Joe Brady. You, um, you lost, you know, tons of first round talent, your quarterback. And it really was just reflective of Ogeron at that point. It was like, well, Ogeron, you lost everybody who helped you win that championship. Now you're, you're what everybody's looking to, and you got to build it back up, what you got. Well, in a way, that was a bit of his defining season. Well, I think Brian Kelly's found himself in a similar situation here where a lot of who helped him orchestrate this offense and win nine or ten games the last two years, they're gone. And – it's going to be reflective as you as a head coach, which you can do to bounce back next year. And by the way, the schedule next year does you no 
favors whatsoever. You've got a tough SEC schedule, plus UCLA, plus USC. Um, <laughs> you got some work to do. And that, even assuming your offense is 80% as good as it was this year, if that defense is anything like it was last year, you probably are looking at a 500 season next year. So there, there's some work to do to avoid that. Favorite Christmas present you've ever gotten? Favorite Christmas present I've ever gotten. Oh, man, dude. You're going to make me go back to like my childhood yeah. and stuff here, man. All right, I'm going to go Christmas 1997. Okay. And I'm going to go with my Pokemon Blue version my parents gave me. Wow. Best gift ever, yeah. Uh, I don't even know what that is. Is that like a, a game or is it like a card? <laughs> Hunt. You don't know what Pokemon is. I know Come what Pokemon on, is. Come but is on, it, man! How I, old I, I thought you? there were cards. It's like Pikachu and like Charizard. Yeah, yeah, it is. It's it's a lot of stuff. But anyways, no, I just <laughs> loved that when I was a kid. I, I, I think presents you get. Uh, I I think presents you got before the age of twelve. Yeah, they just go downhill from there, right? Uh, yeah, you started looking at like socks and tennis shoes and stuff. It's not quite as exciting <laughs> as, as all that. <laughs> Preston, have a great Christmas, and we'll talk next week. Thanks, man. All right, thanks, Hunt. He is Preston Guy, TigerBait.com. Got you covered on the team perspective as well as recruiting angles. He and Mike Scarborough do a, a fantastic job. Beck, do you have a, a favorite Christmas present you've ever gotten? Let me think on it. All right. By the way, Pokemon, he, he's talking about Pokemon Blue. It's, they, they had video games. It's a video Poke, game? Okay. Yeah, they had a bunch of Pokemon video games as well. I, that, the Xbox I got is probably probably the answer there. I mean, that's just immediate Christmas fun for the whatever. Yeah, that's I'll, 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 I remember we were at my grandparents' house, and I got an Xbox. We plugged that thing in. I think... NFL Fever. Oh yeah, is that yep. is that the first That's game? It. Oh man, we were just slinging it around. Um, I would also say I walked in one time and there was a huge what looked like a green fishing net that Santa had brought, and I was like, "What is this?" And it was a batting cage that we had to go in the backyard and oh, assemble. That nice. was also an excellent present. Got a little batting cage set up in the backyard. It was like it was a shorter version, but yeah, it was it was awesome. Um, so that's probably those are probably two of the of the tops. Also, the one that probably got the most use, I got a Sony boombox when I was little, and I used to lay down on the ground with the boombox on, listen to Jim Hawthorne call like midweek baseball and basketball games. <laughs> that got a lot of run. The Sony boombox was happening. So, all right, well, that may be a conversation worth revisiting for you a little bit later. Back. All right, um, we'll take time out when we come back. Uh, I want to talk a little bit about. Um, Gary Nussmeyer, he met with the media yesterday, so we'll talk about that, but we're going to get you ready for the NFL weekend to come. It's a Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show, presented by Corks. The Hunt Palmer Show. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust is giving our customers the power to bank anywhere, anytime during this challenging event. And we're right there with you. Our mobile banking app is a smart way to manage your money and time. Gulf Coast Bank and Trust, the bank that cares about you. Hey, boat owners, check it out. It is the holiday season, which means it's time to buy yourself a gift by taking your boat to the next level with our friends at Front to Back Boat Service. Now is the perfect time to upgrade your boat and get it ready for that warmer weather, whether that's trolling motors, HD sonar, anything and everything. The Sherman family's been at it for 30 years, and Devin's going to take you through 30 more. Find them on Facebook at Front to Back Boat Service or go to fronttobackboatservice.com. The importance of doing this Fortified program and offering it to people down here is, number one, the only real chance you're going to get to do this is when you put on a new roof or build new. And through companies like Hudco, who's kind of leading the way in this thing, it's going to offer the customers a huge advantage in the insurance market and the price of their insurance. You know, we're not looking to we're not looking to make a fortune off fortifying. We're trying to give you a better product than our competitor yeah. at the moment. I'm trying to do something that he can. I'm trying to give you something better. So a lot of these insurance shops, you're getting a re-roof. You're only paying your deductible. <laughs> Let's sit down and talk about the Fortified and let's see what it does to your insurance premium. You're getting a steal. 
Yeah. You're getting a brand new roof and a fortified certificate for your deductible, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think we're rocking and rolling. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected, supported by a five-star sales service and finance team, and backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. nose so choose puffs plus lotion for all of your blows puffs have lotion to soothe sensitive skin so you can wipe without wincing it's a win-win puffs have cushiony thickness which brings relief too so the days of sore red noses are gone and through when you're after soothing softness a nose in need deserves puffs indeed after further review with Matt Moscona, weekday afternoons from 3 to 6 on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Bayou Ford and Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram. Five brands on one lot. Shop BayouAutomotive.com. This Sunday, as we bring you three different NFL games, we start off with Colts, Falcons. Immediately following that, it is Cowboys and Dolphins. And then finally, the Patriots at Broncos. Tune in this Sunday to hear all three of those games here on 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. Had Corks for lunch today. Picked up a 10-count of shrimp, some crispy shoestring fries. They asked me what sauce I wanted. I go with the cork sauce. It's awesome. It's uh, very good. They got your cocktail. They got your tartar. Got your classic ketchup as well. They got ranch. That's your uh, that's your style. The shrimp are fantastic. I'm always amazed. At, it's it's drive through and it's in the styrofoam. But the fries are crispy. A lot of times when you go through a drive through and you get that situation, like the fries are real soggy, not the situation over at Corks. I very much enjoyed my uh, my lunch from Corks. It's a uh, government between Foster and Jefferson. Get on by. New food concept here. About a year change old. And uh, they got a great, great fried shrimp, great fried catfish, awesome po' boys as well. If you're looking to do some catering, Corks can help you out on that front to corksfishandshrimp.com is a website. If you want to check out that menu, you can certainly do it. All right, um, going to hear some sound from Garrett Nussmeyer here shortly, but it's a monster weekend in the NFL, so let's get to it. You know how we do it? Tier 4 is where we start. That's the worst football of the weekend. Good news is most of the football this weekend is really good. Not a ton of action in Tier 4, but Jets hosting Washington certainly does qualify. The Jets will have Trevor Simeon. Back there, it's just musical chairs for a quarterback, and none of them are any good. The Jets are last in the NFL in yards. However, Washington has the worst defense in the NFL in terms of yards. Something's got to give. I just won't be watching it. Cardinals are at the Bears. This qualifies as Tier 4 as well. Potentially Justin Fields and Kyler Murray kind of fighting for their jobs with their current organization down the stretch. A loss by the Cardinals would mark the most losses over a two-year span for that organization since they left St. Louis for Arizona. We'll see what happens there on Soldier Field. That's it for Tier 4, just two games. Tier 3, a little bit better action here. Seahawks are at the Titans. Is Derrick Henry near the end here? 
averaging a career worst 3.8 yards per carry. Last week, he had 16 carries for nine yards. I know the Titans don't have a very good offensive line, and they've been juggling quarterbacks, but Henry's lost his fastball, I think. Packers are at the Panthers. The Packers haven't scored a touchdown on offense in two games. They haven't scored a first-half touchdown in seven games. Carolina can be a pretty good elixir for that, so we'll see. Patriots are at the Broncos. Denver is seeking its first five-game home winning streak since 2014. Sean Payton's got that team playing pretty well, especially in Denver. They welcome in an awful New England team, so that one, I would think would tend uh, to lean towards the Broncos. Giants are at the Eagles. The Eagles have lost three straight. Here's their schedule. I ran through the Saints schedule a little bit earlier. How's this for a grind the Eagles have gone through in their last six games? It started with a home game against Dallas. They were at Kansas City, played Buffalo, then San Francisco, then they were at Dallas, then they were at Seattle. That is a ridiculous six-game meat grinder that the, uh, the Eagles have run through. They won the first three, have lost the last three. They ought to be able to handle Tommy Cutlets, I would imagine. <laughs> All right, tier two. This is where we're getting to the good stuff. The Bengals are at the Steelers. Bengals have won three straight to my chagrin. I'm trying to get a draft pick here. I'm not going to pull for you if Burrow's not out there. And they're playing pretty well. The Steelers quarterbacks this year have thrown 10 touchdowns and nine interceptions. They just have not found a way to replace Big Ben. Bills are at the Chargers. Chargers defense has allowed the second most points in the NFL. And under the uh, Joe Brady, the Bills have scored 30-plus in three of their last four games. Of course, the Chargers have moved on from Coach Staley. I would think the Bills keep rolling out in L.A. The Colts are at the Falcons. It's back to Taylor Heineke for Atlanta. The Colts have had a takeaway in 19 straight games, trying to make it 20 against, I guess that's a backup quarterback for the Falcons. Detroit is at Minnesota. The Lions can clinch the North with a win. If Minnesota wins, ESPN says they've got a 70% chance to make the playoffs. If they lose, that goes down to 28% for the Vikings. The Browns are at Houston. The Browns have won five games this year with a game-winning drive in the last two minutes. Joe Flacco's pushing 40, shaved his beer off, playing great. Their defense is awesome. That should be a good one in Houston. The Jags are at the Bucks in a battle in the Sunshine State. The Bucks have won three in a row. The Jags have lost three in a row. But... Tampa is 0-6 against teams that, as we sit here today, have a winning record. We'll see if uh, the Bucs can inch closer to the NFC South title. The Raiders are at the Chiefs. Mahomes is 10-1 against the Raiders, and seven of those 10 wins have come by 14 or more points. If the Chiefs win, that'll be their ninth straight 10-win season. Andy Reid, Patrick Mahomes, pretty, pretty, pretty good. And Tier 1, you got the Cowboys at the Dolphins. The Cowboys have allowed the fourth fewest passing yards this season in the NFL. Will Tyreek Hill play nursing that ankle injury? Kind of appreciated the ankle injury because it probably kept me alive in fantasy football. My opponent couldn't play him last week. We'll see if he's back against Dallas. And the Ravens are at the 49ers. How about this for a Christmas present for the viewing public? You got Lamar Jackson, you got Brock Purdy, you got Christian McCaffrey, all MVP candidates to this point. 49ers have won six in a row by double digits. The last team to win seven in a row by double digits the 2007 Patriots. They were pretty good. And that is a look at your NFL schedule. There is a lot of NFL action going on this weekend. You know what? I will uh, postpone this Nussmeyer talk to the last segment. I want to spend a little bit more time on it. So let's step away. We'll take a break. We'll come back and close out the hour talking about Garrett Nussmeyer as he met with the media yesterday and has taken the reins of this offense as they go play Wisconsin. That's next on the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. One Bath and Closets. Check them out. OneBathandCloSets.com. David Duvall and his team have been in this game for 30 years, redesigning and remodeling bathrooms and closets. You got a great interest rate, not really interested in uprooting the fam, but you could use an upgrade to the living situation. How about a brand new bathroom? One Bath and Closets will be the only phone call you make. You don't have to call four different contractors to get your bathroom taken care of. One Bath and Closets will handle the entire thing. If you're worried, ah, I don't know if I can pay for that. Financing options are absolutely available with One Bath and Closets. Have them come out, go through the free consultation, and they can show you what they can do for you. Maybe you don't want to do a full-scale bathroom renovation. You just want to do something simple like a tub-to-shower conversion. They can handle that as well. Go to OneBathandCloSets.com. You can see the testimonials from their satisfied customers. You can see the pictures of their fantastic work, and you can request that consultation I tell you about each and every day. Check it out, OneBathandCloSets.com. 
In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Bayou Ford is taking $15,000 off MSRP on new 23 Ford Expedition. $15,000 off new Ford Expedition. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Bayou Ford is taking $15,000 off MSRP on new 23 Ford Expedition. $15,000 off new Ford Expedition. And all new Bayou Ford vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Ford is going to do right by you. It was a humid day. Barefoot children play. Looking for the summer shade. Time to slip away. Like cypress stumps, your roots are planted deep inside of me. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. The interior of an infinity is thoughtfully designed to be all about you. And by you, we mean every version of you. Because there's luxury you can feel, and there's a luxury that lets you feel. Infinitely you. Experience luxury like never before with Infinity Premium Care, included with the 2023 QX80 at your local retailer. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated Through the snow in a one horse open sleigh, or the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on. This is the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. I love Christmas music. I feel like we're probably going to be listening to Christmas music all the way up to Shreveport as I uh, head there after the show. Uh, Miskota made me a little sad. Uh, I think it was yesterday, maybe it was the day before. Um, he said he just wasn't a big, the biggest Christmas guy. Yeah, he was. You gotta be a Christmas guy. Who's yeah, he's. A Christmas guy? Yeah, apparently he's not much of a fan of the Christmas music. I believe that his wife's perhaps over enthusiasm has. has oh, well, maybe that's has yeah. Sullied his joy. Possibly. Um, I'm right there with you, Erica. Though, just it's Christmas, a wonderful time. Yeah. I don't really want to do it on November the third, like no, my wife no, no. did this year. It's, it's the house was fully decorated before the Bama game. Thanksgiving is the cutoff for me for for Christmas music and all that stuff. I'm with you, but I enjoy you know I'm cooking dinner, putting some Christmas tunes yeah, it's on. Nice. I, I enjoy that. So yeah. uh, last year we did a lot of driving, uh, going to Lafayette and Metairie and the North Shore and all that. This year it's just direct Shreveport and set up shop for a few days. Um, so not as much driving. We did all Christmas music when we were driving all those miles. Last year. All right, uh, Garrett Nussmeyer going to be the starting quarterback for LSU in the bowl game. He met with the media yesterday, and uh, I just I found some of the things he said to be um, to be interesting. And, and one was uh, just talking about the, the preparation for him for this bowl game now as he's taking the reps with the ones. 
Yeah, I mean, it's been off. Uh, it's been awesome. Um, I wouldn't say it's been different in my preparation. You know, I feel like, you know, I, I feel like I tried to uh, play to my role as best I could uh, whenever it wasn't my opportunity to start and be ready and prepare like I was a starter. With that being said, it's way different, you know, um, getting the reps and, and getting to you know work through everything and, and expecting to play and knowing I'm going to play. You know, it's ex it's exciting. Um, you know, I'm really excited for it. And, you know, I mean, it's, it's still the same thing, you know, trust my coaching, trust my teammates and do what I'm told to do and, and uh, execute and lead the offense. You know, it's it's such a great landing spot for him because you've got a, a Joe Ward, a Joe Moore finalist offensive line in front of you. You've got two fantastic wide receivers and a really strong tight end. You've got a healthy running back situation for the first time uh, all year. So all the pieces around him are set up for for success. I think it's a great spot for Garrett to to log his first start. He was asked if this is kind of a statement game for him. Yeah, I mean, it's not a statement. Um, you know, I know what I'm capable of, and you know, I know what I'm, what I'm gonna do here. And um, you know, I'm just gonna trust my coach and trust my teammates and, and do what I'm told to do and uh, lead the offense. And I wouldn't say I'm trying to make a statement or anything like that. You know, I've been here. You know, I know what to expect. You know, I've been, been here, worked, and um, you know, I'm excited. You know, I'm always interested in the dynamics of a quarterback room because often there's some contention there because there's only one quarterback. It's not like wide receiver where three of them are out there at the same time. So there's a there's a natural competition that would go on in, in a quarterback room. And for Garrett to have sat behind three different guys, starting with, with Max Johnson and, then you know, obviously looking at, at JD5 this year, it's a situation where he could be bitter and, and have some animus towards those guys who have beaten him out. But every time Jaden Daniels is throwing a touchdown this year, coming off the field, Garrett's doing the celebrations with him, and they're playing the, the guitars and all that kind of stuff. And, and so it would come as no surprise to me that, that Jaden Daniels would be a really good you know, resource for Garrett as he prepares to, to play in this game. And Nussmeyer talked about learning from the Heisman winner. Yeah, it's been awesome, um, you know, especially having, you know, I mean, we had the competition two years ago and, you know, we, we made each other better every day. And I think was that was the best part. And I think that's helped my career the most was having to compete against such a high level player every single day. And, you know, we went at him, we pushed each other and there were no off days and we made each other better. And I think that's what I took away the most was, you know, that that competition, you know, learning things and, and seeing how things work. And um, I think that was huge. Now you look at Nuss, and you, you're, you're, he becomes the voice in that huddle. You, you bring in a new left guard, and everything kind of stays the same because the left guard doesn't say anything or, or do much. Just turn around and do your job. The quarterback's in charge of the rhythm of the offense, is in charge of the cadence that everybody is going with. They're in charge of being the, the alpha in the room. And Garrett has gone from being kind of a bystander to the guy in the middle of the huddle that's kind of leading the team. And when you're replacing the Heisman winner in that way, it can be a little bit intimidating, I would think. Um, so Nussmeyer talked about his his leadership style as opposed to, to Jaden's. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say, you know, we are definitely different in that uh, aspect. Um, but there's there's no uh, one uh, right way to lead, you know. And, and Jaden was a leader. You may, you may not have seen him yelling and, and screaming and talking to people, but he led and ex led by example, and he led in his own way. And, um, you know, just because we're different in the way that we lead, I don't think that that's uh, affected anything. I think that leadership in that spot in the quarterback room is still there, whether or not I'm yelling or he was quiet, you know. And, uh, you know, I think also one of the things Jaden improved on was that is, uh, you know, he started to speak out more. And, and, and it helped him a lot this year and helped us this year. I wouldn't say that there's a big difference or a big fall off. And one of the things I took away from going to practices last year, preseason, we, we didn't even know if Jaden Daniels was a starting quarterback or Garrett Nussmeyer was a starting quarterback. It was actually a competition last year. And we were kind of paying attention to, one, how the guys played, and two, like what their mannerisms were like out on the field. And what was very obvious about Garrett is that he is full of energy. When they would complete a pass or a big play, you'd see him running down the field, jumping up on the wide receiver's shoulders, throwing high fives. He was very energetic and emotional when, when he played. And I think that's kind of the guy you're going to see when he's out there playing. Um, we haven't gotten a, a, a great look at Gary Nussmeyer. He's played a little bit. We saw him in the Arkansas game in, in 2021. We saw him against Georgia in the second half of the SEC Championship game last year, a little bit against Purdue. He came into a really tough situation in the game against Alabama this year where they, he was down two, two scores and they were just bringing you know tons of people on every drop back because they knew right where he was going to be and what LSU had to do. So we haven't seen a lot of it, and I think – what we're going to do with this game, as I've said multiple times, like I feel like there's going to be 
a pretty sizable overreaction to what happens in this bowl game and how Garrett Nussmeyer performs. And everybody's going to immediately put eyes right to the USC game Labor Day weekend and go, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, but there's development that obviously goes on, and we've seen that with Jaden Daniels in a, a big, big way. And Nussmeyer talked about the development that he's had since his first real game action, which was that Arkansas game back in 2021. I would say I'm a totally different player, just mentally. I mean, that's what, three years ago, just the growth I've, I've, I've uh, got to have mentally. And, um, you know, everything's still there. He's still the same player, but he's a more experienced player. He's, he's learned how to take care of the football. He's learned when to stretch it down the field and when to not stretch it down the field. And, um, you know, he's learned, most importantly, how to, how to run the offense and lead it and take over and, you know, put my foot down if I think something's right and I'm going to stand on it. And I think that's the biggest thing uh, for me is building that confidence in this building, building the confidence in this offense. And um, I think that's the biggest difference. Well, third person there from Nuss, but uh, like I, I, that's that's fair. I'm I'm assuming that there has been a, a sizable amount of of growth over the last three years. It's just not something that we can see because he's not out there playing in the games that that we're watching. I thought when this bowl game was announced that there was a really good chance that Jaden Daniels wouldn't play, that Malik Neighbors wouldn't play, and that Brian Thomas wouldn't play, or at the very least, Malik Neighbors. Excuse me, Malik Neighbors would go out there and play for the 21 yards and then sit down, which I guess he still could theoretically do. Um, but I thought there'd be an opportunity for a lot of young wide receivers to play. You've got these freshmen that didn't just get a lot of runs. Selton Sampson dropped a couple touchdowns against Grambling. We never really saw him again. We haven't seen much of Jalen Brown. We haven't seen much of, of Kyle Parker or Kai Prion or um, haven't seen much Aaron Anderson, quite honestly. Uh, it's really been those top three. It's been Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas, and Kyron Lacey. So Nussmeyer hasn't been working with those guys. He's more often been working with the young receivers. And the question that was posed to Garrett was like, how, who's emerged from that group? I think a lot of the freshman class um, has, has worked their tails off. Um, you know, Sheldon and KP and Kai and Jalen, all those guys, you know, and, and even Pimpton and, and, and Mac. And, you know, we have a really good, solid young group that has really worked, and they've gotten better and better and better. And, um, you know, they've, they've had great examples to learn from in Malik and BT and Kyron, um, you know, and Aaron Anderson too. And so, you know, I think, you know, they've made strides. And, um, you know, I'm really excited to, you know, continue to keep working with those guys and for us to keep going. I, I'm curious to see those guys whenever we do, whether that's in this game against Wisconsin or maybe it's in, in the spring game because there's there's so much talent there and, and Garrett's been been working with them. The other guys that he's been working with are Joe Sloan and Mike Denbrock. And we know that Mike Denbrock is moving on to Notre Dame and Joe Sloan uh, is going to be uh, an interim co-offensive coordinator with Cortez Hankton, uh, who's been the wide receivers coach uh, on, on this group and done a phenomenal job there. Um, but Garrett's been working with Joe Sloan a ton. I, I thought that this would be a really great place in terms of continuity because Garrett Nussmeyer has been working with Mike Denbrock for two years, and now Mike Denbrock's not going to coach in the bowl game. So that relationship is is out the window. But Joe Sloan is a guy that he's worked with very closely. And, and Nussmeyer, before this news broke, was asked yesterday about his relationship with Mike Denbrock as well as Joe Sloan. I love the relationship I have with Coach Sloan and Coach Denbrock. I, I wouldn't want to be coached by anybody else. I'm um, getting to work with them every single day. It's been really good for me. Um, Coach Sloan has really, really helped me become a better player and a better person. And getting to work with him one-on-one -on -one every day, is, it's uh, definitely helped my career a lot. You know, I think that was part of the reason why I came back was Coach Sloan and um, the relationship we have and the ability that I believe he has to coach me. And again, this was before the news broke. Maybe Garrett knew. Uh, maybe so. I, I don't know. Um, but he talked more about Joe Sloan there than he did about Mike Denbrock. And, and so I w we were talking with Preston Guy about this a little bit earlier in the hour about whether or not this is kind of an audition. And I don't know that Brian Kelly will necessarily make a, a decision purely based on what goes on in the bowl game. But you know, Joe Sloan certainly could help himself if things run really smoothly and if things are efficient and they score some points. Wisconsin, I talked to you about you. I talked to you yesterday saying they're, that their offense is atrocious, and it is. Um, their defense is not atrocious. Their defense is, is pretty good. So if if Joe Sloan were able to go out there and and put some points on the board against Wisconsin and score score thirty, that certainly would I think advance his cause. I don't know how blindsided is probably not the right word, but how prepared Brian Kelly was for this Mike Denbrock news. You always understand that could happen. We know that there were some overtures made by Texas A and M towards Mike Denbrock, so it can't be too surprising uh, to. To Brian Kelly that folks were interested in in hiring Mike Denbrock away just curious as to what the next move is and we just we just don't know Brian Kelly's been in this business a very very long time he's got an extensive network and a lot a lot of contacts he's also got a guy that may deserve a shot right there in the building 
and he'll get that shot here coming up in the bowl game, and and maybe this sticks, and maybe they go outside. Um, there are a lot of different options to consider there, uh, but it sounds like to me that Garrett Nussmeyer has a really, really good relationship with Joe Sloan, and there's potentially a chance for him to be elevated to that spot. We shall see. Quick moving first hour. Friday show is brought to you by Corks Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. If you missed any of it, you can catch it on demand, 1045ESPN.com's On Demand tab, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, wherever you find your sound, uh, or YouTube. You can find us. Search the Hunt Palmer Show. Like, subscribe, rate, review. We always appreciate that. If you're in the Bayou Ford chat right now, please throw us a, uh, a like. We appreciate that very, very much. Now, a lot of you are on the road traveling. Thanks for making us part of your travels. If you're still uh, still grinding, still working on this Friday before Christmas, we'll be here to get you through that work day as well. I open the show talking about the Saints. You can find that at Hunt on Saints on YouTube. Uh, I am done with this current regime. Last night was just reinforcement uh, to that point. Uh, Preston Guy was with us at 115 talking LSU. Of course, there with TigerBait.com. Got you ready for the NFL weekend to come and Garrett Nussmeyer audio as well. In hour number two, we'll start things off with Brandon Taylor from the LSU Sports Radio Network. Got some hoops talk to get to as well. Come back after Sports Center. Bayou Chrysler Dodge Jeep Ram has $10,000 off MSRP on new 23 Jeep Grand Cherokee. $10,000 off new Jeep Grand Cherokee. And all new Bayou Automotive vehicles come with a 1 million mile warranty. The crew at Bayou Automotive is going to do right by you. Life in Louisiana is like a run-on sentence. A poem that doesn't rhyme. Life is here, now. For life's moments, big and small, always there. The right card, the right care. Elevate brand visibility, ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. Would a couple that just came from a couple's massage have any use for the massage seats of the Infinity QX60? Yes, it appears they would. With driver and passenger massage seats, mute all your notifications and feel infinitely you. Electricity is all around us and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us.
At Relief Windows, we're more than windows. We're windows, doors, party plank, and vinyl siding. But our number one product is always customer satisfaction. Visit us online at reliefwindows.com. I'm Kevin Winter, breaking news this morning. Florida State's Board of Trustees voted unanimously to sue the Atlantic Coast Conference, challenging the legality of both the league's grant of rights and the $130 million exit fee. It's a necessary step that the Seminoles must take as they plot their future and a potential exit from the ACC. Florida State now becoming the first school in the history of the NCAA to challenge a grant of rights in court. As ESPN Andrea Adelson notes that this is not a direct result of the perceived snub from the college football playoff as has been brewing for the last year, but the snub was viewed by the board as the last straw. However, yesterday, the ACC preemptively fired a complaint against the board of trustees from FSU asking the judge to declare the grant of rights signed by Florida State in 2013 and 2016 to be valid and enforceable. If you have an ice cream headache, don't worry, you're not the only one. NFL Christmas coming early for Bills quarterback Josh Allen. His offensive line and his tight ends give him the quarterback that they're his Christmas present today. It's a four-wheeler, and it's glorious. Hey, it's Michelle Smallman from Unsportsmanlike. I just want to wish everyone a happy and healthy holiday and a happy new year. We'll see you in 2024. It's Unsportsmanlike, 6 a.m. Eastern, right here on ESPN Radio, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Gentlemen, may I direct your attention to something quite extraordinary? Now, the Hunt Palmer Show. The Hunt Palmer Show on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish, and Shrimp. Live from the Mercedes Benz of Baton Rouge Studios. This is Hunt Palmer. One more hour to go for us here in this work week. Where we knock off for a few days for the Christmas holiday. Wouldn't want to start the last hour off with anybody else. We'll head out to the Jim's Firearms Hotline. Chat with our guy Brandon Taylor, former Tiger, member of the LSU Sports Radio Network. Maybe in Houston, maybe in Franklinton, probably in the woods somewhere hunting. Where where are we at, BT? (laughs) Right now I'm in Houston, hunt, but I'm headed to Franklinton to get in the woods. (laughs) You got it. You have it right, but in the wrong order. There you go. All right. Well, we're good. Did you get Fave a Christmas present? Negative. (laughs) If I do get one, it'll be a watch. So be okay. <laughs> well, that would be really, really helpful. That or a phone charger we could we could deal with. Um, <laughs> BT, we got some news today that uh, Mike Denbrock is going to leave to be the offensive coordinator at Notre Dame. Obviously, he was a Broyles Award finalist and piloted the best offense in the country with the Heisman Trophy winner this year. How big a loss is that for LSU? I think it is a bigger loss. Just the chemistry he had with the guys and as far as recruiting and players wanting to come in and play in his system, but I think that LSU is – they're left in a good position, especially with uh, Brian Kelly. I mean, he's an offensive-minded coach, and he understands the offense. So I think the next person he brings in or hires would be the same caliber, if not better. This defense has had a month to get healthy and game plan for a offense that's been terrible. Wisconsin has been really, really poor on offense, and their 1,000-yard rusher is not playing in the bowl game. Is it reasonable – to expect LSU's defense to take a big step forward in this bowl game? Oh, I expect them to. I think that they had time to just calm down and reflect. And, uh, and they, these few weeks off will give them time to watch film and see, like, the mistakes that they were actually making and just to realize that nobody was pointing the finger at them, that it, it was just common mistakes that they was making that needed to be changed. And, and it was mostly they needed to look in the mirror and, and realize who they were and, who they was playing for and what was on the line. And I think they realized that once Jaden did win the Heisman, I think it, that just took a lot of pressure off of this defense because a lot of that was relying on them and the way they played as far as the way the media was putting it. And I think that took a lot of pressure off of them. And now they can go out there and play loosely and freely. I want to talk to you about some big picture things in college football because you played just about a decade ago. Your last year was in, in 2011. And how big a deal were were bowl games to y'all? Oh, man, that was our lifeline. It, it, it was – we thrived on it and just knowing where we was going. I mean, my favorite bowl game was a bowl game I didn't even get to play in because I was hurt, and that was the top bowl when we played Texas A&M. Yep. And 
it was just the gifts we got, like just being on the road with the team for a whole week and all the coaches families and them taking us on trips and it's just you get a, a lot of time to bond with the guys that I mean you in classes and you go to workouts and practice you don't really get to to, to really bond with them just out of state in another place in another city and I mean it just it's just more to play for and you I mean it's a bowl game man um, so let me paint this picture for you because we know that last year LSU played a Purdue team that did not have a head coach, did not have its all-conference quarterback, did not have its top two wide receivers. This year you're playing a Wisconsin team that doesn't have um, its its top running back. Your Heisman Trophy winner is not playing. Texas A&M is going to play in a bowl game. Their head coach is fired. Their offensive coordinator already works at, at Arkansas. Their interim head coach works for Syracuse, and he's recruiting some of their commitments to go to Syracuse. Like they, they don't even have – their quarterback's gone. They don't even have a team. So – when you look at, at the, the reality of the bowl situation now, what do you think? I think that it needs to be some type of regulation because these, I don't know if people realize, like, a lot of money goes into these bowl games. And, like, as far as, like, preparation and you setting up a whole city, basically, to be prepared for that and to take on that capacity of the bowl game. And that's why LSU and – Teams that travel well get the best pick bowl games because those cities and those bowls know that those teams are going to bring revenue. And I mean, these kids got to understand like it's still a football game. You still got to go out there and participate. And if I'm an NFL scout or NFL evaluator, I'm evaluating if you're going to play for your team or not. Like that's the most important game to me, the bowl game, because you're playing a team most likely out of conference that you've never played before, and that gives you all more to brag on, right? What about the transfer portal? What do you think about it? Right now you can transfer once and play. It looks like legislation is coming that's going to allow NCAA athletes to transfer whenever they want and always be immediately eligible. You could play at four different schools in four years if you want to. What do you think about that? I hate it, hun. Yep. I hate it. I hate it for the fact that the life after football, if you can't be committed to a team, a school, and you, you're bouncing around like that with football teams, especially when – they're investing money you in the NIL deals and things like that. They're going to mess it up for the kids, not now, but 10, 12 years from now when they do start putting regulations on everything. They're going to drop a hammer on them, and it's going to be back to when I played. Like you, in order to play the next piece, you have to go to a JUCO or a level down. And if you went like to anything that was D1, you had to sit out a year. And – it just it just shows like these kids don't have any type of commitment. Like you got to have a spine and a backbone at some point in your life. And I wish that these parents would get into it and just like, hey, you made a commitment to these people. You took money from them. You need to to finish this out. And I don't see that from these kids nowadays. If you were in charge, what system's best? The one where if you the one that was in place like you just talked about when you were there, a one time transfer, hey, you can transfer once, but after that then you've got to sit out, or just carte blanche, do whatever you want. What's the best system in your opinion? I think that you should really trans you should be able to transfer once. Because I don't think that you hold a kid back, especially if he has a but I think that you should have to submit a letter. It's a process that you should have to go through. Like you should sit in front of a board. You should sit in front of a – you should write a letter to the administration and the school because you're taking up a scholarship like that somebody else could have got and that you're just bouncing around and you, you, you're missing up the opportunities for another kid. And for the university, I, you got more li- – I have more liability than the player does. And I don't think these kids understand, like, when I was coming up, like, the school – it was kids that I had. So when I went to a camp, Coach Miles told me and Coach Saban told me at uh, Alabama, which he told me, my brothers and all this, he said, hey, Brandon, if you don't run a 4-5 or a 4-4, four, four, I'm not going to offer you a scholarship. You have to run this. And I went out there and I ran that and I earned that scholarship. And it was like, it's more of like the the, the schools are just pouring every too much into the kids and they – they're putting all the liability on themselves instead of the kids having any type of liability because they're getting paid and they don't have no type of incentive to stay there once they get paid or you piss them off as a coach and you're not giving them what they want. So it's like the, the schools going to have to take their power back as far as, hey, 
I'm putting this investing. I'm investing you as far as a scholarship, and you getting this amount of money. Like you gonna have to show me something or do something or limit. They got to limit the, the the amount of times you can transfer because it's getting out of hand and, and it's out of control. It's wild, wild west. So on signing day, uh, Notre Dame's head coach Marcus Freeman thanked the collective on signing day for getting things together and organizing their recruiting class. I saw Mississippi State's head coach Jeff Levy went to his press conference in a Mississippi State collective sweatshirt. I don't think that was a coincidence on signing day. We know that Ole Miss has a collective that's humming, and they've got the number one transfer portal class. That includes Deion Smith, who played at LSU, who showed up to his signing in a Lamborghini. Um, <laughs> it's so... What do you think about uh, NIL in college athletics? You played in a secondary that could have gotten paid pretty well. I think Tyron might have had uh, might have had a few dollars running around when he was uh, back in 2011. It's to the point where you not it's not even in it's not intended what this thing was for. Like it's basically becoming a clown show. <laughs> like you, dude, what are you in a Lamborghini for? You. First of all, you are under 26, so insurance, your insurance is going to be more than your car note anyway. <laughs> but the common sense here, they don't know that. So they just, I don't, at schools, shame on the schools for even doing that and allowing that. Like, you got to have some type of morals or something as a university. Like, look, we got a certain way we're going to do stuff. Just like LSU's uniform. That's tradition. Don't get me started. The way your school is carried should be tradition. Like, look, this is the way we do things at LSU. If you don't want to come here and play for this school, oh well, so be it. It's kids lined up, kicking the door, will kick the door down to come and play at this university, and that's the kids you want, not someone that you have to basically drop your pants down for and get smacked on the ass for and just go against everything that you've ever been as far as a school. Like, no, I'm not. I'm not with clownery and fools. Especially when you're not winning championships. Yeah, that's that is uh, that's not happening. <laughs> That's Brandon Taylor from the LSU Sports Radio Network. BT, have an awesome Christmas. I'll see you at 9 o'clock in the morning on New Year's Day. All right, hunt you too, man. Brandon Taylor, former Tiger, SEC champion, and uh, always bringing, uh, bringing the heat. He's, he's, uh, he's cut from a different cloth, and that's what the passion we, we love. <laughs> it's a clown show. <laughs> Deion Smith showing up to his signing in Oxford in a Lamborghini. That's... Uh, Quite a move um, from a guy that just got out of Juco. So, BT, uh, awesome, awesome dude. Looking forward to uh, our pregame show starting up at 9 o'clock on New Year's Day as LSU gets ready to play Wisconsin in the bowl game. All right, uh, LSU got a win in basketball last night. I warned you uh, last yesterday I thought this could be a really sticky spot. LSU won the game by 21 points. I'll give you my thoughts on it coming up next. The Hunt Palmer Show. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the gymsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the gymsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. Hey, boat owners, check it out. It is the holiday season, which means it's time to buy yourself a gift by taking your boat to the next level with our friends at Front to Back Boat Service. Now is the perfect time to upgrade your boat and get it ready for that warmer weather, whether that's trolling motors, HD sonar, anything and everything. The Sherman family's been at it for 30 years, and Devin's going to take you through 30 more. Find him on Facebook at Front to Back Boat Service or go to fronttobackboatservice.com. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, (laughs) playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. There it is, the extra mile, on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team, and backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded, because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial properties. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, 
clothing boutiques. Insurance Network of Louisiana can find you better coverage for less money. They service the entire state of Louisiana, and they're local. So call today at 293-0450 or lainsurance.net. Glide and twirl in a winter wonderland. Skating on the river is back. Ice skating at the Raising Canes River Center Arena, December 18th through 31st. Visit RaisingCanesRiverCenter.com for scheduled times, dates, and to purchase tickets. Sponsored by Fox 44, NBC Local 33, Guarantee Media, and Acadian Ambulance. of an infinity is thoughtfully designed to be all about you. And by you, we mean every version of you. Because there's luxury you can feel, and there's a luxury that lets you feel. Infinitely you. Experience luxury like never before with Infinity Premium Care, included with the 2023 QX80 at your local retailer. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or You're listening to The Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp. It's been a while since I saw the Charlie Brown Christmas special. That's, I, I probably need to, to watch that. Oh, yeah, it's a classic. I mean, if you're going to watch It's a Wonderful Life, I mean, you can watch another old school Christmas movie. I watched It's a Wonderful Life on Wednesday. Just fantastic. Great, great, great film. Mean old Mr. Potter. Terrible. Going to save Bedford Falls. Great, great, great movie. Pretty good effort from LSU basketball last night. Yep. Be honest. Uh, I was watching that and the Saints at the same time, um, but I got a chance to watch a good bit of LSU. They beat Lamar 87-66. to 66. Lamar's bad. I was concerned about a little bit of the matchup because Lamar does shoot the three very, very well, and LSU defends it atrociously. Um, but they were better last night, and while I'm not going to throw a bunch of bouquets at the LSU basketball team for beating Lamar, I will say this. Um, just watching the game, and Jalen Cook started last night, and he played 33 minutes. He's so clearly their best player, and he so clearly impacts the game more so than any of the other guys on the roster. He is in control of the offense and the rhythm of the game. It's it's night and day between Mike Williams and Jordan Wright trying to do that as opposed to, to Cook. He wasn't brilliant last night. He was 2 of 7 from 3. He missed 4 free throws. Um but he did have five more assists in one tournament. It means he's got 11 assists and only two turnovers. He's in control. And I still think LSU has got some some talent issues, and they're going to be really up against it in SEC play just about night in and night out. Uh, Vanderbilt looks terrible. Arkansas hasn't played great. Um, I don't think South Carolina is a world beater. But um, it's, it's going to be an uphill battle in league play. But Cook does make a big difference. It's just the, the whole operation looks different. He's able to distribute far better than anybody else on the team. He's able to control the tempo better than anybody else on the team. Um, and I think the shooting is going to improve uh, as he plays a little bit more. He's he's put up a bunch of threes and, and hadn't necessarily cashed in on them early. But last night he led the team in scoring with 17 points. He led the team in assists with five. Um, he's just – he's a difference maker – uh, in the positive for for LSU, and there's no question about that. They started he and Mike Williams last night. 
Uh, Williams only played 17 minutes, but Cook Cook played 33, like I said. Um, Jordan Wright, fresh off a 30-point half against Texas, went 1 of 10 from three-point land. LSU as a team only made nine of their 38 threes for uh, 24%. But um, they were excellent in distributing the basketball. They had 18 assists to in their 31 field goal makes. That is... That is far more sustainable, in my opinion, than trying to play one on one and and hitting a bunch of threes that way. Like they've got to be able to to get into a rhythm offensively and create some shot opportunities. And they didn't have a guy that was able to break teams down off the dribble, get teams into rotation, and and start to make an offense that looks fluid. They just didn't. Early in the season, they kind of fed it down to Baker and saw what he could do. Then you're really dependent on Jordan Wright far too much after that. And so the Cook addition is a big deal. Beating Lamar by by 21 is no cause to throw a parade. But I, I just I enjoyed what I saw from that last night. Um, you look at Will Baker, who's coming off of apparently an illness. Hopefully that's been what's hampering him and not just, just poor play and bad matchups. Uh, but last night he was 5 of 6 from the floor, uh, did score 12 points in his 25 minutes. So that is a little bit cleaner. Um, and look, LSU did a good job running Lamar off the three-point line and not letting them get hot from three. They only attempted 22 threes last night, and they only made six of them for 27%. We mentioned Pryor, who they had three guards that were shooting over 42% from three, and Pryor went one of five, Anderson went one of two, and Knight went one of five. So you weren't, um, you didn't get torched off the three-point line, which was a, a real positive there. LSU forced 19 turnovers from Lamar. I like that. They got into some full-court defense that was good. So... Look, again, I'm looking for improvement night over night. Um, beating up on a, a bad team from the Southland isn't going to prove it. This is the first Power 5 game that Lamar has played all season. So, you know, that, take that for what it's worth. They're a 5-7 and seven team. It's only played one Power 6 team, and it's LSU, and they lost by 20. So, I just, my biggest takeaway was not the score, nothing super statistically speaking. My biggest takeaway was LSU is just in a much better place with Jalen Cook out there. He's he's the quarterback. He's the starting pitcher. He's the point guard. He's the guy that the game revolves around for LSU. And again, I didn't want to put too much expectation on him when he came back. I didn't want it to be like Adam Miller. Because if you remember two years ago when LSU was one of the best defensive teams in the country but really struggled to score on that team with Xavier Pinson and Brandon Murray and Eric Gaines and they just they and Tari Eason, like they weren't a great offensive team. Um, they were a good defensive team, and everyone was saying, well, if they had Adam Miller, he'd fix it. And because he's not out there, it's easy to make that claim. And while LSU's losing games early, well, if they had Jalen Cook, he's not going to be a first-team All-SEC player, but he just does – he runs the show at a level that no one else on that roster is capable of. And I wish they had a guy that they could just plug in right after him if, if he wasn't going to be available. That would be ideal. They just, they just didn't. Now that he's going to be eligible for the duration of the season – I feel better about where this team's going to be offensively. And frankly, they're going to have to win some games with offense because I don't think they're going to be a great defensive team. Maybe when Damian Collins comes back, he helps a little bit at the rim. He's been hurt. <clears throat> Baker's not a great defender. Wright's not a great defender. I, I haven't seen enough of Jalen Cook to know if if he's a, a good defender or not. And Wani Wilkinson doesn't play a lot, even though he is a really good defender. Um, it, it's... I don't know if they're going to be great on defense. I think they could be good on some nights offensively, and Cook certainly brings that to the table. So um, last night, Lamar only shot 43%, 27% from uh, three, and they only shot 57% from the free throw line. LSU wasn't much better in terms of the field goal statistic. They, they shot 43% and just 24% uh, from three-point range and 64% from the line, but they forced a ton of turnovers. They limited the turnovers to, to just 11, and Jalen Cook looks really good in his 33 minutes of action. So as he continues to get into game shape, I think his shooting percentage will go up. Um, we'll see how much they put him on the floor with Mike Williams as well. Um, so nice win for LSU in, the, in terms of the way it looked last night against Lamar. 87-66 to 66 was the final. I'm not 100% certain um, when the next uh, LSU basketball game is. I think it's maybe next Friday. I'm pulling up the schedule right here. Um, there's only one more non-conference game left that will be against Northwestern State next Friday, uh, and then they get another week off, and they'll play that Saturday on January 6th against Texas A&M in College Station. The Aggies are 
are tough out. They rebound like crazy. Uh, they're really veteran, and, and they've been banged up a little bit. But when Radford comes back and, um, and with Way Wade Taylor plays, they're, they're going to be a tough game. LSU starts SEC play with A&M. And then their first home SEC game is going to be a Tuesday night game against Vanderbilt, who is worse than LSU. Um, Jerry Stackhouse is not long for that job. So chance to, to get in the win column early for LSU. I don't know if they're going to win in College Station, but they could certainly win that home SEC opener on January the 9th against the Vanderbilt Commodores. So we're moving right along. Uh, remind you, our Friday show is brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish, and Shrimp. I had Corks for lunch today. Fantastic fried shrimp platter with those crispy shoestring fries. Uh, they also asked me in the drive-thru if I wanted a slice of their cheesecake. I'm a huge cheesecake fan. Just didn't know if I wanted to eat dessert for lunch right before I was about to come on and do the show for two hours. So I did pass on the cheesecake. I would not advise for you to do the same thing. When you go and buy uh, Corks, get that delicious fried catfish. Maybe a, uh, a shrimp po' boy. Grab a piece of that cheesecake. They had four different flavors of cheesecake over there at Corks. Check out the menu, corksfishandshrimp.com. You can see they've got the big haul if you're feeding a bulk. They've got tailgate platters, party platters for you over there at Corks. Or just fantastic time to go through there, grab a little lunch or dinner. Corksfishandshrimp.com. Proud sponsor of our Friday shows, and we certainly appreciate them for doing it. All right, we'll have 30 minutes left to go when we come back. I don't really know what's going on over in the ACC, but we'll try to decipher it and what it may mean for the SEC and for LSU. That's next on the Hunt Palmer Show. You are now listening to the Hunt Palmer Show. LWCC is Louisiana loyal, elevating and celebrating champions of Louisiana like Marucci Sports. Marucci on the forefront of the baseball technology industry, and that's why big leaguers like Anthony Rizzo and dozens of others come to Baton Rouge to hone their craft because Marucci is that well-respected. They were just started in the backyard here in Baton Rouge. Now they're the big time. That's why they're a champion of Louisiana. They also bring a ton of tourism dollars to Baton Rouge each and every summer with their Marucci World Series. If you know a champion of Louisiana like Marucci, go to lwcc.com slash champions. You can look at all the champions that we've told you about over the past two years. You can also nominate a new champion of Louisiana. Marucci Sports, a champion of Louisiana, and LWCC is Louisiana loyal. In times of need, get a full list of phone numbers, websites, and other important emergency information on the Demco Stormwatch page at 1045ESPN.com. Follow us on Twitter at 1045ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, live at lunch, on Palmer. And after further review, Citizens Bank and Trust brings you the poll of the day via Twitter at 1045ESPN. The best kept secret in town is out. Discover Tallulah at the Renaissance Hotel on Blue Bonnet. The Windsor Senior Living Community in Mandeville, Louisiana is a beautiful, vibrant apartment community geared toward seniors. They are nestled right in the heart of Mandeville, where seniors live a more carefree lifestyle in spacious apartments with the peace of mind that comes from having a little extra help. Call the Windsor at 985-624-8040 to schedule a lunch and tour. Come see how the Windsor can be your passport to peace of mind. Yo, Jake here from my friends over at Community Steel Company located in Gonzales, Louisiana. The local place you can turn to for all of your metal building needs. Notice I said local. Not Houston, not Dallas, not Atlanta, but right here in Gonzales. Visit them at their brand new state-of-the-art website at communitysteelco.com or pick up the phone and give them a call today to answer all of your questions on your metal buildings, roofing and sheet metal, and any other steel needs you or your business need at 225-647-2020. Would a couple that just came from a couple's massage have any use for the massage seats of the Infinity QX60? Yes, it appears they would. With driver and passenger massage seats, mute all your notifications and feel infinitely you.
Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs, even in the case of an after. Scone inviting you to join us for Friday's AFR presented by Don Juan Cigar Bar. Our final show before Christmas, the Riot Radio Hours return, and we'll recap in Saints Ranch. Join us 3 to 6, 104.5 ESPN Baton Rouge. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, riding down Santa Claus Lane. Like so blitzing all the hills of reindeer Pulling on the rain Bells are ringing children This is the Hunt Palmer Show Brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp So, um, I think those of you who listen to this show uh, With any regularity at all Know that I'm more uncomfortable And just enjoy talking about ball screen defense Or decisions whether or not to punt Or, you know 3-0 green lights on the baseball field in game action than whatever goes on in courtrooms or negotiating tables or any like I don't I don't love talking about that stuff but um there are times when it's necessary and this is is one of those um Florida State is officially challenging the ACC's grant of rights agreement and they're got a team of lawyers that is going to make an effort to get out of this thing as the contract reads about Seven about five hundred and seventy million dollars would be owed to the ACC from Florida State should they get out of that agreement. Now they're obviously not going to sit there and write a check for five hundred and seventy-two million dollars. Um, they're going to try to find a way out of this thing, and they've got a, a team of attorneys that believe they have a case. Now Twitter was lit up like a Christmas tree. Bad pun there. Uh, this morning as the meeting was ongoing because. It was a public meeting and was able to be viewed by those members of the working media. And so I, I'm not going to go through the details of what the attorney saw or what they think. I'm just going to talk about the potential ramifications if this happens. If Florida State can't get out of this, then we don't really have a story. The ACC has fallen way behind, and they would continue to fall way behind the SEC and the Big Ten, and nobody would leave because they can't. So that's not a story. The only story here is if this works. Florida State wants so badly to do this. They know that based on the decision of the committee this this year, that like the committee sneers at the ACC. They much more appreciate the SEC and the Big Ten. They went undefeated and they didn't get in. Now they would still get in next year because we'd be out of twelve teams, but they're uncomfortable with their position in the in the world of college sports. And I will share one quote from you, and this was from the Florida State athletic director. Said this is a math problem, and the math is pretty easy. You look at the grant of rights agreements that the SEC and Big Ten have inked in the last eighteen months, and you look at the one that the ACC is stuck in, and you're talking about tens of millions of dollars every single year that Florida State and the rest of the ACC is falling behind. And ESPN is not in a hurry to go and make up the difference. So Florida State's looking for a way out. And if they get out, is the SEC interested? We know for years, Florida, South Carolina, and Kentucky had a voting block and perhaps Georgia, but I think to a lesser extent, to keep Florida State, Clemson, and Louisville out of this league. They wanted that advantage. And the same thing would go for Texas A&M. But we know that Texas A&M didn't get their way because the SEC invited Texas right on in. So the question is, have we lost that line of thinking? Has Birmingham decided, yeah, I understand you don't want them in, but guess what? The dollar always wins. We need the dollar, and these folks bring more dollars. If that's the case, Florida State's a pretty natural fit in the SEC. Geography works. Culture works. Tradition works. That's fine. But if there's a blockade here, does the Big Ten have any interest? 
And if the Big Ten doesn't have any interest, then all of a sudden, what are we doing here? It feels like Florida State would know they have a landing spot to get into this situation because I don't think the goal of this thing is to go independent. And I think eventually Notre Dame's not going to be independent because the the benefit of that national TV deal that they once had that no one else had is no longer there because the dollars and cents are greater when you join a league. So Greg Sankey will have a decision to make. And I know that if Florida State gets out of this thing, all hell's going to break loose. And we know that the SEC has eyes for North Carolina and Virginia. Those are the top two, I think, on their list. I don't know where Notre Dame ranks there, but they want to grow the footprint and add television sets. That's what all this is always about. And if Florida State gets out of this thing, the ACC ceases to exist. We've already lost the Pac-12. And we're inching toward the two Super Leagues. The Big 12 can sit there and beat its chest and suggest that it's a power four. I don't know what we're calling that now. It's not. Houston and Cincinnati don't don't make you a power when Texas and Oklahoma leave. It makes you the opposite of that. But could we see, due to this court ruling, the demise of another league? And where do people start to pick off? I'm just, I'm fascinated by the conversations within the conference. Because you know there will be lobbying parties. And if you're Alabama or LSU, or at this point, Texas or Texas A&M, or Tennessee, or hell, Arkansas, Ole Miss, Mississippi State, you're looking at Greg Sankey and going, hey, I don't give a damn about adding another team from some other state. Like, if they're bringing more money, we need the money. LSU and Bama want to keep up with Ohio State, Michigan, USC. And Ole Miss and Mississippi State are saying, yeah, we'll take the extra cash. Meanwhile, you got Florida sitting back there going, no. We're the only SEC team in this state. South Carolina's going, I don't think so. These annoying neighbors we got here in Orange, they're not coming in. So you've got differing opinions, I'm assuming. But it's it's fascinating. And I, I don't know enough about law to know what the end result of this is going to be. But I, I, I do find it hard to believe that Florida State would make this massive leap and call a, a meeting of their whatever board of directors, board of supervisors, whatever it is, the Thursday or Wednesday before Christmas and go through with this if they didn't think there was a realistic chance they could make this happen. I don't think they're just dragging the AACC into court to make them look bad. There's got to be somebody on that legal team that thinks, here's the case. Now, I've seen that the actual agreement's not signed starting at a certain year, so those rights aren't guaranteed. There's some legalese in there that I'm not even going to try to decipher. But if I'm just going to get to this on a surface level, it feels like Florida State has some reason to believe they can get there. And I guess our Citizens Bank and Trust poll question of the day, do you want the SEC to expand with some ACC teams? Is that something you as an SEC fan want to see? Or is that something that we're good, we're trying to keep this tradition, that's fine. The Big Ten wants to buy up everybody they can can have. I'm... I'm okay with it. I think it moves you closer if you add four more teams to the league. It just moves you closer, I think, to never play in these group of five schools and FCS teams. Eventually, if you've got so many teams in your conference, you make the whole schedule out of them. And you've got a model that looks just like the NFL. Maybe a few more teams, but the same general premise. It's, it is, it's interesting... But it's complicated, so it's tough for a doofus like me with no ability to decipher law to sit back there and go, all right, well, y'all tell me when it's over. I'll, I'll react to that. But Florida State's certainly making a push, and we'll see if they can get out of that $572 million they're supposed to pay to get out of this ACC grant of rights agreement. I don't think we're very far from, I don't think we're very close to the conclusion of this thing.
but we shall see. We got one segment left to go. We'll play some Take It or Leave It, and then I'm headed to Shreveport for Christmas. Come back with us. The Hunt Palmer Show. You're on the road this Christmas, and you're heading between Baton Rouge and New Orleans. Stop on off at Jersey Mike's Highway 30 in Gonzales. It's just north of I-10, about a mile north of I-10 at that Tanger Mall exit. They have got fantastic subs, famous cheesesteaks like the number 17 steak, grilled fresh to order, tender steak, peppers, onions, white American cheese. When you order it, they put it right there on the, on the griddle. Get it hot, melt that cheese right over the top of it. It is awesome, and the cold subs are fantastic as well. I like the original Italian. The club sub is great as well. If you like the veggie option, they can do that too over at Jersey Mike's. They're on DoorDash. They're on all your food delivery options. And stop on by and see them at Highway 30 in Gonzales. You've got a catering situation coming up for the Christmas holidays or the new year. Jersey Mike's does a fantastic job with that as well. Jersey Mike's, it's a sub above. Our listeners fire up their opinions on the jimsfirearms.net hotline at 499-1045. Keep listening for your next chance to shoot us your thoughts with the jimsfirearms.net hotline on 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. There it is, the extra mile on the border of expected and extraordinary for those willing to go further, like vans customized for work or play, with safety and tech to keep you connected. Supported by a five-star sales, service, and finance team. And backed by the one-star you know. So go the extra mile. It's never crowded because so few have what it takes to go there. Mercedes-Benz Vans. Elevate brand visibility. Ignite customer engagement with the power of radio and digital advertising combined. Guarantee Digital Media brings the two together as a trusted media partner in Louisiana for nearly a century. Claim your free digital audit at GuaranteeMedia.com. The interior of an infinity is thoughtfully designed to be all about you. And by you, we mean every version of you. Because there's luxury you can feel, and there's a luxury that lets you feel. Infinitely you. Experience luxury like never before with Infinity Premium Care, included with the 2023 QX80 at your local retailer. Dylan Cruz here to tell you about Six Rings Baseball and Softball Camp. If you live on the North Shore and play ball, go to Six Rings Camps with former LSU assistant coach Dan Canaveri. His knowledge is second to none, and your child will improve and have fun doing it. Camps are held at Coquille Park and Six Rings Academy in Covington with four sessions over the summer. Full day and morning only sessions are available from ages 7 to 13. Go to SixRingsBaseball.com or call 985-206-9096. Learn the game to love the game. Electricity is all around us, and our families depend on it. Every day is sparked by the power of a cold drink or a warm meal, a movie night, and a comforting light at the end of a dark hallway. From sunrise to sunset, <laughs> playtime to bedtime, our team is ready to take care of your electrical needs. Even in the case of an after-hours emergency, the light in your life shines brighter with Mr. Electric. I've been doing business with Luba for 25 years. They're dependable, trustworthy. It's just the attention to detail with our clients. Uh, our folks have years and years of experience. They're highly trained professionals, but many companies have that asset. What I'd like to think makes Luba a bit different is that we use those talents in a way that truly is dedicated to serving the needs of the folks who depend on us. Follow us on Twitter at 1045 ESPN to cast your vote in the Citizens Bank and Trust poll of the day. Vote daily inside Off the Bench, live at lunch on Palmer. And Jimmy out and Charles Hanegriff. It's Tuesday edition of Live at Lunch, live at Mike Anderson Seafood on Lee just off of Nicholson. That's right, Tuesday, live at lunch, 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. right here, 1045 ESPN Baton Rouge. I'll have a blue Christmas. Without you, baby, I'll be so blue thinking about you. You're listening to the Hunt Palmer Show, brought to you by Corks, Cajun Fried Fish and Shrimp.
We're going to take a couple of days, Monday and Tuesday, off as a, a station. But we'll be back on Wednesday getting you ready for LSU and Wisconsin. So um, enjoy a little time away. My wife has to work on the 26th, so I'll be here. But she's not going to come into work. <laughs> um, appreciate you all for hanging out with us here on this uh this Friday edition of the Hunt Palmer Show, presented by Corks Beck. You have had 90 minutes to come up with your best Christmas wow. present. What do we have? You're right, I have. And you I, didn't think about it ever, did you? No, I did a little bit, actually. I kind of did when we were talking about it. But if I had to say my favorite Christmas gift of all time, it would probably, I don't know. I I, I, I don't think like this is the the definite answer, but I think it would have to probably be my PlayStation 3, which is kind of, you, you mentioned you got an Xbox, yep. so... Yeah, whenever I got that, me and my brother, uh, we played. We had so many hours into that thing. It, it was it was a great time. So I, I think I'll have to go with that. I, I can't hate on that pick. the uh, The old gaming systems were quite a hit back in the day, and they stopped making NCAA football because yep. of the nil stuff. And I just never played video games again. Apparently, it's coming back though. That's what they we'll say. We'll see. Maybe when uh, Myers gets old enough to game, I'll get Maybe. back into it a uh, time or two. But uh, I haven't. I don't know when the last time I played a video game was. Quite frankly. All right. Uh, we got uh, one more thing to do. Let's uh, play a little take it or leave it. All right, let's start off with the New England Patriots. Coach Bill Belichick said that the kicking footballs used in the first half of Sunday's 27-17 loss to the Kansas City Chiefs were underinflated by two to two and a half pounds and deferred to the NFL as to why that was the case for both teams. Both teams missed field goals as well. This is a coincidence. Take it or leave it. Uh... I'll I'll take it I guess I'll I I'll take it. Two and a half pounds seems like that a lot. That seems like a lot. Yeah. Like what is a football weigh? I know it's a oh, PSI the, the PSI thing. PSI thing. Yeah. I, but a pressure. I don't know. I, I, two and a half pounds. Like that feels like it would be like. It feels like it'd be obvious. Yeah. That it's way like under. Like one of the footballs has been in the garage for like four years that nobody's picked up. It's yeah. got cobwebs on it. Like two and a half pounds. I, this is this can't be. Get, get, somebody would notice this and change it. I, I, that's. That's very odd to me. I don't. Yeah. I don't know enough to have a strong comment on that. Just to know that that seems like a big deal. Yeah. All right. Next one here. The Dodgers ah. signed Japanese star Yoshinobu Yamamoto to a 12-year deal. By the way, he won like three of the equivalent Cy Young awards yes, in a row in the Japanese did. league, which is very good. Their starting rotation will now include Yamamoto, Shohei Otani, Walker Bueller, and Tyler Glass now. The Dodgers will lead the league in quality starts. Take it or leave it. Shohei won't pitch this year because of Tommy John, but oh, they will have right. Yamamoto, yeah. they will have Bueller coming back off injury, and they will have Glass now. I mean, it is – that's a remarkable squad. On they, might be, they might bring back Clayton Kershaw. We'll yeah, it brings – I mean, kind of honestly brings back, like, if we're going to talk video games, I used to play King Griffey Jr. baseball with my buddy, and we would trade all the players and we'd be the Cubs – and I would have Mike Piazza, Frank Thomas. You can go all the way around the diamond. Mike Piazza, Frank Thomas, uh, Roberto Alomar, Derek Jeter, Ken Caminiti, uh, Larry Walker, Chipper Jones, and Barry Bonds would be our lineup. Wow, it doesn't seem very fair. Uh, and then we'd have a rotation that was like Pedro Martinez, Randy Johnson, Kurt Schilling, Tom Glavin, and uh, so you won every game basically. Yeah, we usually would go 162 yeah. and 0. It was yeah. uh, it was quite a squad. That's what the Dodgers feel like. It's like Mookie Betts, Freddie Freeman, Shohei Otani. Uh, the guy they got with Glass now as well, yeah. uh, the outfitter. I, I don't remember his name, but yeah, they they, they have uh, embarrassment of riches. They spent a billion dollars in free agency, a billion dollars with that's, a B. It's, uh, uh, that's probably more than the A's have spent on their entire payroll for the history of the franchise. It might be. Goodness gracious! All right, next one here. Uh, Mizuno announced a Masters theme special edition set of their Pro 241 model irons that will feature Masters green heads with yellow paint fill for the numbers and logo. The irons will only be released in Japan. This is a mistake. Take it or leave it. Um, I'll take it. Probably you can I'll sell some it. of those. I don't know that I want green golf clubs. Uh, it seems like a little bit well, distracting. Well, I'll show you. I mean, I can show you a picture of it later. But I saw a picture. I saw. I saw what they look like, and they look pretty darn cool. Like it's because it's, it's Masters, so it's a little bit darker green. It's not like a super bright green. Now, so, like, and Augusta is extremely particular about yes. everything that goes yeah, on. Yeah, yeah. Um, like they give the the commentators a tutorial you have to say patrons instead of fans it's second nine not back nine like all that kind of stuff um i'm curious like if they gave the okay on this or if the mizuno just said Maybe well we're per doing it perhaps that's why they're only being going to be released in japan I i'm not sure I, I, I i'm not sure oh and by the way we're talking about the masters just uh, as an aside do you think uh miguel uh 
Co wait, on Hell Cabrera, uh, Cabrera is going to be invited to the Masters this year. I mean, the PGA he just got out of prison. And the for PGA three years. cleared him to play. So, I, the, I the Masters is not played by they, the PGA Tour. They're, they're different. So I, I would say probably not. They told uh, I can't remember his name, Gary McCord, that he could never call the Masters again because he said that the greens like looked like they had been bikini waxed, and he was never invited, let, allowed back to the Masters again. This guy went to prison for some like not good domestic yeah, assault yeah. stuff. And he's a former champion, so he's, I mean... It might be. And he said, like, they, I think they were maybe hoping that he would, like, bow out and be like, yeah, I'll, I'll say... But he's like, no, I, I want to go. <laughs> I'm sure he does. I mean, yeah, why wouldn't you want to go? You can play at Augusta, yeah. Guy's been eating out of, out of, like, the cafeteria food in prison for three years. He'd like right. to go put on a jacket and have a nice meal. That'll be uh, that'll be something to follow in April if uh, if El yeah, Pato is allowed back on the, the uh, on the ground. Imagine the conversations at the uh, Masters dinner, Champions Dinner. They were like, "Hey, how you doing, how you doing there, buddy? Yeah, I was in jail. I was in prison. <laughs> what's been what's been up? Yeah, three uh, hots in a cot, baby. All right, next one. We got some Christmas stuff here. Eggnog, take it or leave it. Gonna leave it. Um, you know, milk and bourbon. Like, I just, it's, isn't it bourbon? I, yeah, something like that. I, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I've I, had it before. It's, it's, I'm I, into like a lot of like festive things, but I, I don't know about that drink. Just, I'll just take a scotch. Yeah. I, I wonder if, I know, I'm sure there are some people out there that actually enjoy eggnog. Yeah. However, I do feel that for the most part, I think it's just something that people, it's a Christmas thing. Right. So you're like, I'll drink eggnog. I don't love it, but like it, but when I'll I, drink it. When I think eggnog, I think about Cousin Eddie and, yeah, and course, scooping it out of the moose, yeah, <laughs> the moose class. Right. They, there's also a place in Shreveport that does eggnog daiquiris and they make a bajillion dollars on it. Um, just not, not for me. Yeah. Christmas Eve over Christmas Day, take it or leave it. I will take it. I, this I'll is a controversial well. take. Uh, you, you agree? I'm with you. I'm with there, you. The anticipation's there. Yeah. Like, it it's always strikes me on Christmas at this age. Now, it'll be a little bit different now that I've got uh, Myers in, in the next, like, five, eight years are going to be really, really fun from that perspective. But, like, it's it's kind of been eye-opening the last, like, ten years. Um, like, you go into my mom, like my parents' house, and, like, we have, a, like, 40 people. So, like, there are a lot of presents under that tree. Yeah. And they are all opened, and it's done at, like, 8.50 a.m. And then you're looking, there's, like, 9 o'clock, and you're like, all right, uh, when's lunch? And so, it, but Christmas Eve, you've got, I mean, we do a big lunch, and you've got the anticipation, all the kids are excited, and, like, it just, it feels really fun. And then Christmas Day kind of, and then this year, because my wife's working on the 26th, we're leaving Shreveport on Christmas Day, which Dang. is kind of a bummer. Yeah. Um, so we'll probably be, we'll be in the car from like four to seven. So that's that's a bummer. I'm I'm in on Christmas Eve. I, I like yeah. It. For me, Christmas Eve, yeah, because all all of my typically usually all my like family events and gatherings are Christmas Eve. So like Christmas okay. Eve night, that's always like the, the the best. You know, you get to see all your family. And, and for me, that that's just how it was. Christmas Day is is definitely great. But I do think that Christmas Eve, yeah, with the anticipa anticipation or anything, I think I think it's I think it's better. I'm but. with you. Next one here, Christmas Mass. Take it or leave it. Um, if we're talking Christmas Eve, I'll take it. I don't know that I want to go to church it. on Christmas Day. But well, is that the midnight yeah. mass? Right? Yeah, like, I've I, never done midnight yeah, mass, but um, I would be opposed. To I that. do like Christmas, the Christmas church service. I'm Methodist, so we'll do that in Shreveport. Like, I like getting dressed up and put sport coat on. Go. I mean, I don't really usually ever wear a sport coat to, to church, but I will on Christmas. And like it, again, it's that the whole energy around it is really really cool with the church we go to up in uh, Shreveport. They turn all the lights off at the end. Everybody lights the candles. Candles, we do Silent yeah. Night. It's yeah. really cool. They do the Hallelujah chorus. It's it's awesome. And then head on home and grab a cocktail and eat some gumbo or something. I'm I'm in on uh, going to church on Christmas Eve. Like it. All right, last one here. White elephant gift exchanges. <laughs> take it or leave it. Um, I'll take it. I like I'll take it. We uh, this was years ago. We had a little family drama uh, Ooh, over this wow. one time. Uh, so we uh, it, it got canceled for a couple of years. Ooh. But uh, we've gotten back into it. I like it. You don't want to go into the details, I guess. We'll we'll, we'll keep the details away. There was a, a <laughs> present that was intended for the four year old who was Ooh, playing. No. It got stolen. We didn't like okay. that. It was a bad deal. Yeah, that's not so, good. So uh, this was like twenty years ago. But uh, it's it's back. Uh, I don't have a gift for it yet, so I'm gonna have to go to shopping tomorrow for a twenty dollar gift. Good gift. luck with that. But I'll we'll make it happen. Look, maybe you roll a twenty dollar bill up and stick it in the local. Hey, but all I else mean, fails, and that will go quickly. That will it go will be, quickly. It'll be, it'll be stolen immediately. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> so uh, no, that's. Uh, but I'm, I'm in on that, and I uh, 
I, I do not allow number one to go at the end. I think that if you're one, you're first, and then we end at the last one. Okay. Um, Interesting. But I, I, like, uh, I like the white elephant. We actually call it pirate exchange. Okay. I did growing up, but I've kind of converted. Some people to white call elephant. it dirty Santa, dirty white Santa elephant. You know, as it's well. got different names, but. <laughs> Michael Scott. Yeah, dirty, dirty the Michael Scott is all he can. <laughs> what uh, did he get? The iPod, I think. It was an iPod? <laughs> an iPod. Or an iPhone. Or something like, like that. like a $10 limit. And yeah. Phyllis knitted him a, a and an they oven didn't, mitt. Yeah, and they didn't, ha they didn't have a trade limit, so everyone just kept stealing it back and forth. That's all that happened, yeah. <laughs> that show is so good. I saw, like, one magazine put the top 100 shows of all time. They had The Office in, like, the 90s. There's no that's way. That's crazy. There are 90 yeah. shows. They had I Love Lucy first, which okay, I, mean, I mean, that's, that's no good for yeah. me. Uh, the OC is better than I Love Lucy. Uh, it was not on. It was not on the list. That was my big, big gripe. Nice. All right, that's it for a little Christmas edition of uh, of Take It or Leave It. I know a lot of y'all are uh, traveling on the road today. Thanks for making us part of your day. Get uh, get to your destination safely. Hope everybody has a wonderful Christmas. Again, we are out on Monday and Tuesday. We're back Wednesday, and we're getting close to a uh, to a bowl game at that point. So we'll certainly talk a lot of football coming up next week. If you missed any of the show today, catch it on demand. 1045ESPN.com's on demand tab. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, or uh, YouTube, wherever you find your sound. I open things up talking about the Saints, and they got to get rid of Dennis Allen. That was the overriding uh, theme of my comments. Preston Guy talking LSU football at 115. Got you ready for the NFL weekend, as well as Garrett Nussmeyer audio uh, in hour number one. You can find that at Hunt on LSU on Twitter. Brandon Taylor was with us in hour number two. That's going to do it for us. Matt's going to drive you home or wherever you're going from three to six on After Further Review. Have a wonderful, merry, and safe Christmas. We'll see you next week on the Hunt Palmer Show. Hey, it's Matt Moscona. For years, you've heard me tell you about Insurance Network of Louisiana, helping you find better coverage for less money. But it's not just for your home and auto. They also offer commercial property. So, retail stores, professional offices like doctors, dentists, attorneys, clothing boutiques, Insurance Network of Louisiana,